Welcome to the Midnight Storytellers Legacy Project. My name is Chloe, and if you make yourselves comfortable, I have a story to tell you. Especially as we're getting towards Halloween and the spooky time of year. It was a grey and muggy morning in the city of Venice. Seven fishermen and their servant boy were setting off for work. They splashed through rain puddles in St Mark's Square, pigeons pecking all around them. And they went to the edge of the Grand Canal and got down into their shabby old motorboat and wrestled the engine into life and started. And they chugged away down the curves of the Grand Canal and out into the lagoon of Venice. They went past Murano, the island of glassmakers. As the morning mists burnt off and the sun warmed the day, they went past the island of the dead and nobody wanted even to look at that place of ghosts. All around the lagoon of Venice, there are dotted small islands, some of them not even on the map. Many years before the start of this story, those seven fishermen had discovered and taken over a small island that had a ruined villa and an overgrown garden. And in the garden, they'd made themselves a very comfortable little place to come in and, and rest and have their midday meal. They had a, a fire pit, they had some old chairs and mattresses. And first thing every morning, what they did, and they did this now, is they took their boat to the end of the long wooden jetty for that island. And they, they, they tipped the servant boy out and they said, Lad, we are coming in for our lunch at noon and we want everything ready and we want everything right. We want pasta al dente, we want spicy sauce, we want cold wine, and woe betide you if things are not done just the way we like. And that servant boy, who was probably no more than 12 or 13 years old, he still had bruises from the days when his masters didn't like the way he prepared their lunch. So, they left the boy on what they thought of as their island and they turned the old motorboat around and chugged out across the lagoon and now the sun was high in the sky and they were sweating as they worked. They cast their nets and reeled them in and cast their nets and reeled them in. But they were catching nothing. It was as if all the fish in the Venice lagoon had vanished. And the seven fishermen were on their way to being in a foul mood when the man keeping lookout in the prow gave a shout. He'd seen something floating in the water and not for the first time in the Venice Lagoon. The something floating in the water turned out to be a dead body. Once she had been beautiful she still wore her silvery ball gown and her jewels, diamonds at her ears and around her neck and wrists. And straggles of dark curling hair lay across what remained of her face. She'd been in the water long enough for the fish to have plenty of chance to nibble. But the seven fishermen of Venice didn't care what the poor young woman looked like. They knew they would get a reward for taking her back to the city and to her family. So they hauled her into their boat. And then, of course, it occurred to them that no one needed to know that all those jewels hadn't just slipped off her and sunk to the bottom of the lagoon. So. They took the diamonds, they filled their pockets full. But as the day got hotter, they 
well, they didn't care what she looked like, but they really didn't want to have to smell her. So they, they folded her up, seeing as she wasn't going to get any deader. They folded her up and shoved her under a seat and put an old tarpaulin over her. And then it was time for lunch. They turned the boat around, chugged back to the end of that long wooden jetty, moored up, and climbed out of the boat. As their heavy sea boots thunked and clunked up the planking, the seven fishermen thought up a joke, a prank to play on their servant boy. The lad was waiting for them at the end of the jetty. Uh, ma masters, e everything's ready, j just as you like. And the fishermen said to their servant boy, We've got an extra guest for lunch. We rescued a lady who'd fallen overboard from some ship or other, and we took her into our boat, but she'd had such a fright, she needed to sleep. She's still in our boat now. She's having a snooze. So, boy, we want you to go and wake her. Go and wake the lady up and bring her to join us for lunch. And the boy said, yes, of, of course, masters, right away. And they heard his bare feet pattering away down the wooden jetty as the fishermen settled themselves down on their chairs and their mattresses and tucked into their food. They stuffed their faces, they swigged their wine, and they were listening, grinning, nudging each other, waiting for the, the scream, the shout, the panic, which didn't happen. And eventually the, the fishermen were sitting back, replete. They had their glasses of grappa and their small cigars and a little bit of coffee. Oh yes, they knew how to live. And it was warm and they were ready to sleep. And then they heard the boy's bare feet come pattering back and they looked up out of sleepy eyes. The boy stood in front of them and said, Masters, I've done as you asked. I've woken the lady up. She's coming. Now. And the fishermen were so full and sleepy, they couldn't even move, as from the jetty coming towards them, they heard squelch, 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 wet, heavy footsteps. And that was when the servant boy ran and hid at the far end of the garden. He did not want to see what happened next. But he couldn't help hearing the shouting that started and then the shouting that turned to screams. When silence came back, the boy moved again. He ran past everything that had happened, down the wooden jetty, jumped into the boat, tugged the engine into life, cast off the mooring rope and turned that boat away from the island. Some people say that as he went with the engine chugging steadily, some people say that a jewel sparkled down in the scuppers, a diamond. Some people say the boy took that diamond, didn't bother going back to the city of Venice at all, went straight to the mainland and made himself a new life. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I can't tell you if that happened, but what I do know is that those seven fishermen of Venice were never seen again. <laughs>